We start off on the mortiser. This sash has a 45mm or inch and three quarter top rail, so it has to be a bridle joint. Whilst the bottom rail is three inch or, or 70mm, allowing us to do a traditional mortise and tenon on that one. Over to the tenoner for the rails now. This sash has a splayed mould, so on this tenoner we have to use the fifth head to do the scribe on this one. Now to the bandsaw to rip the tenons. We actually uh, position the mortises back by the depth of the rabbit on these. So when we cut our tenons, we have what I'm doing here now is we set the the fence up here to go back the depth of the rabbit on the rail to allow us to actually cover the round that the chain creates on the edge of the style. So this effectively gives us a nice tight joint. And this is me now just cutting off the excess to actually create that shoulder. And to the glue up. Normally if I'm making a batch of sashes I'd, I'd have some glue in a pot with a brush but just for one sash it's not worth the, the hassle so I just spread it on. If I don't do a good enough job, I'll wipe it over with my finger, but I've covered it pretty well here, so all's good. And over to the cramp for the glue up. I've had to pack this one a little bit as you can see because I made my tenons just, just ever so slightly too long. And given the nature of this cramp and how it works, if the tenons are the same length as the styles are wide, then the shoulders won't come up. So I've packed these ones just so we can get a nice tight shoulder on them. Unlike our doors, we don't actually wedge the tenons on the sashes. We just uh, we used to put a, a metal dowel through the joint, but I can't get them anymore. So nowadays we just use a, a timber dowel, a hardwood dowel through the joint, and that's what I'm doing here. And now I'm just setting up the angle of the blade to match the bevel that's placed on the sill so that I can cut the bottom rail of the sash to match. And now I've just plumbed the blade up and we're actually trimming the sash to the correct height. And over to the jointer to size it in the width.
And once it's all sized, we move over to the stroke sander and we, we do our first sanding on it, which is basically a rough sort of sand, but a, a proper sand, but it's, it's a bit coarse, so it's not the final sand. And now we're on to the spindle molder so that I can create the rabbits to, to house the friction stays. This is an awning sash which is a top hung sash opening at the bottom. And over to cutting the glass. I've just uh, lost the line here as I was looking for it. Got to be careful there. I've cut myself pretty badly once. Uh, by losing the line and having my hands in the wrong spot, so a little bit of extra care on that one. So now we're just doing the fine sand which takes out all the scratches from the stroke sander and we give it an arras on the outside with the plane and around the edge of the rabbits and the mould with the sanding cork. Now a bit of silicon's run in to accept the glass. And the glass is laid in and then we grab the sprig gun and we use the uh, diamond points which hold the glass in place until the silicon has gone off. And finally I'm just rolling in the putty uh, to finish the sash off. This is the final stage, so we roll the putty in cut it off with a knife and then the sash is finished ready to go.
So I hope you've enjoyed this little rundown of how we make our sashes. Uh, if you do, like and subscribe. And in this coming photo, you'll see the sash that I had to replace on the right there. Thanks for watching.